Now, the first section on the cardiovascular section of the blueprint is over cardiomyopathy. There's three basic cardiomyopathies that you need to be familiar with when you're taking the NCCPA. Dilated cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, looking at them on the surface, they're, each of one of them have their own intricacies and their own uh, things that worth remembering. Um, let's dive into dilated cardiomyopathy first. Um, dilated cardiomyopathy, it's important to point out, of the three cardiomyopathies that we're going to be concerned with for the exam, it's the only one that um, has systolic function um, that's impaired. Um, it, it can involve one or both ve ventricles. Um, think of the ventricles as being enlarged and going from these really normal sized atria to these extra large ventricles and kind of blood just kind of slushing around in them. Um, uh, the um, uh, thing you have to be familiar with is the causes. Now, there's a huge laundry list of causes, and I would say in terms of the exam, what I would focus on is just be able to recognize these and, and uh, um, pick them out, not necessarily have them memorized. Um, you know, they, they list the causes of being genetic, thyroid toxicosis, uh, starvation, it can be peri or postpartum, cobalt ingestion, sarcoidosis, radiation, hemochromatosis, thiamine deficiency, alcohol, catecholamine induced, infectious, which can be viral, parasitic, or, and, and or radiation. Um, you know, big picture item, I, I would just, you know, point out that, you know, this can be, it, it can be idiopathic or it can be in, in um, caused by ingestion of toxins or radiation or infection or metabolic disorders. When you look at a patient with dilated cardiomyopathy on physical exam, it's going to be similar to the patient, how they present with heart failure. Um, the EKG, you would see some left ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, of course, diagnosed by echocardiogram. Um, the only thing that you consider is a uh, cardiac biopsy for is that those who you suspect might have a treatable cause. Um, uh, treatment is similar to targeting, uh, it's similar to heart failure targeting, increasing preload and decreasing afterload. So that's where the ACE inhibitors and beta blockers come in. You think of the ACE inhibitors as being these potent vasodilators that make it easier for the heart uh, to pump the blood out. Reduction of the thing, reduction of things, and um, and the beta blockers kind of slowing things down, uh, so give the heart a chance to fill efficiently and make each beat more efficient, thereby um, improving preload. The next thing that we need to look at is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, um, you got to think of it as this thickened interventricular septum that is basically uh, causing outflow obstruction and di di diastolic dysfunction. It's almost like it's a stiff ventricle. Um, it can um, it has a normal or left uh, small left ventricular size. Um, the, the thing to remember about this, it, why it, ha it causes diastolic dysfunction. Um, if you're going to detect a murmur on a physical exam. It's going to be a crescendo, decrescendo, systolic murmur. I would probably, in terms of the exam, I would probably just focus on it just being a systolic murmur. And, and you know, you may have an S4 and S3 gallop, you know, due to the ventricular stiff, stiffness uh, problems that are associated with it. Um, another thing to remember about it, it's, of all the cardiomyopathies, it's the most likely to cause life-threatening arrhythmias. Again, uh, the... Most common symptom is, is dyspnea on uh, on exertion, um, similar to someone that would have uh, you would see with CHF too. But uh, you don't have a lot of more of edema concerns on things like uh, things like that. These patients also have may have exertional chest pain rather than actual coronary artery disease but due to the ventricular and septum imp impeding the uh, um, blood flow uh, out of the heart and, and decreasing the perfusion of the coronary arteries. Um, syncope or dizziness may be present, and that kind of makes sense. You know, if you have a um, patient that's 
it ha has the basically a flow block or sl being slowed down or impaired coming out of the left side of the heart. The great vessels aren't going to be perfused as much, and thus uh, decreasing cerebral perfusion. So, um, and another interesting side bit: th these can also be asymptomatic. Um, so you have a wide a, a wide variety of um, of uh, symptomatology associated with it. You know, they they may not even have any symptoms, and they can you know have life threatening arrhythmias and present with you know syncope or even exertional chest pain. Uh, and of course, you know, with all cardiomyopathies, an echo is needed for diagnostic confirmation and, and to determine the severity. Um, and typically, when you detect these, they're in, in, they're in older people that you may be considered with, you may be concerned for heart disease. So, you, you know, of course, you'd have to do a catheter rule out com, 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 concomitant heart disease because it's possible to have more than one thing associated with it. Um, uh, treatment is also uh, targeting uh, diastolic dysfunction. So beta blockers are, are good to treat. Beta blocker, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Calcium channel blockers are are, are ideal. Um, calcium channel blockers in general, anytime there's any diastolic dysfunction, they 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 improve uh, uh, um, uh, um, prove things. Um, calcium channel blockers in, in general, you know, di dilate the arterial side, and they also have some, because they're smooth muscle activity, um, relaxing the smooth muscles help um, uh, improve diastolic dysfunction. Beta blockers can be used also to help uh, increase preload and allow the ventricle to fill better. The next thing we need to do is uh, switch gears and look at uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Um, this is the last one we need to talk about. Now, this one uh, also has diastolic dysfunction. So, in terms of the exam, when you look at this, keeping your your mind that uh, it's restrictive in in in, in, in uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the two cardiomyopathies that essentially you're, we're dealing with a small ventricle. Uh, those are both going to have diastolic dysfunction. Uh, so, in dilated itself has systolic dysfunction. Um, uh, um, uh, the curious thing about this cardiomyopathy is the systolic function is normal. Um, the thing that I would keep in your back of your mind for the terms of the exam is amyloidosis is the uh, um, leading cause. Um, Again, uh, with any of these, uh, when we're looking at the causes of them, uh, I would just keep the, I'm not necessarily trying to remember uh, in terms of the exam, uh, um, the uh, the whole entire laundry list and be able to list them out. I'd be able to recognize them. And there, uh, the, the, uh, the other causes is idiopathic. Uh, they can be idiopathic, um, uh, be caused by sarcoidosis, hemochromatosis, radiation, scleroderma, and Gaucher's disease. Um, with, with this uh, type of cardiomyopathy, you're going to see right heart failure symptoms present, you know, dilated neck veins, um, and uh, sometimes you, you'll have to perform right heart catheterization to make sure there's no evidence of constrictive pericarditis. Um, these diagnoses are um, oftentimes difficult to separate. Um, as with all the cardiomyopathies, as I said before, uh, echo is needed uh, um, to establish the diagnosis, and trim, uh, uh, treatment is uh, similar to those in heart failure. Uh, however, on this one, we we tend to focus on, because there's no syst uh, systolic dysfunction, but we, we, we're going to uh, add diuretics to help decrease systemic vascular resistance. To sum things up, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, you see systolic dysfunction may affect one of both uh, ventricles, and the, and the chambers are, are large. Um, symptoms are similar to CHF. Um, you have uh, dilated chambers. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a diastolic problem where you have small chambers. Remember, we're kind of, in terms of, for memory's sake, we're, we're going to... Uh, kind of almost relate this to restrictive cardiomyopathy. But both have small chambers, small ventricular chambers, and they both have diastolic dysfunction. But the thing to remember, a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it has a systolic murmur associated with it. Uh, can present as uh, dysphagia on exertion and chest pain with activity. Remember, this is the one where we have the, um, the, the thickened intraventricular septum sort of causing outflow obstruction. Restrictive cardiomyopathy, uh, it's a diastolic problem, small chambers, uh, right heart, uh, elevated right heart pressures, amyloidosis is the most common cause, and uh, treatment is similar to heart failure, only in this one we're going to focus on.